Hey, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at chapter six examples. So the very first example we're going to be looking at is we have a buck. So that's the name of this animal in the picture. So every buck has a unique set of antlers and scientists and hunters alike quantify the quality of the antlers by taking several measurements such as the distance between the tips, the diameter, and the symmetry. So these numbers are then adjusted and added together. And when you sum these all together, it's called a score. Okay, so most bucks have average antlers and a few have poor scored antlers and a few have exceptional. Okay, if you wanna know more, I put the uh, link to that information right there. It's actually pretty cool. So mature bucks have the following antler score of N130,18. So the raw data is shown below. All right, so this is the raw data. So what we wanna do is draw a distribution. So remember what this N means is it means that our distribution is going to be normal. That means it's going to be symmetric. So if we kind of look at this picture, right? And we just drew the general shape over it, we would have a normal distribution. So a normal distribution means that we're gonna have most things fall around the average. Whoops, let's go ahead and draw that a little bit better. Most things are gonna fall around the average and then they're going to tail off on either side. So most bucks at the highest point of this distribution are going to have a antler score of 130. Now some of them are going to fall a little bit below and some of them are going to fall a little bit above. Now remember within one standard deviation is going to be 68% of our data. So some of them are going to fall 18 below on their score. So it's going to go down to 112 or 18 above, which would be 148. Now we also want to go two distributions out. How much of our data is going to fall within two distributions? Yep, one, or not 195, 95%. So there's 94. Great. So what do the N, 130, and the 18 stand for? Well, remember the N means that it's normally distributed. Normal, that means it's not going to be skewed. So it's going to look something like this. The 130 is going to be the average score, and the 18 stands for the standard deviation. Remember, standard deviation is, um, you know, kind of gives you some wiggle room. So you expect most bucks to have a score of 130, give or take that 18 for their score. All right, now a buck has a Z score of 1.35. So the first question, is this buck score higher or lower than average? Would you say it's unusual? And then we want to find the buck's antler score from this z-score. So if we scroll back up, let's go ahead and look at this normal distribution and just redraw it below. So looking at the normal distribution, okay, again, we're going to have 130 in the middle, and then one standard deviation up is going to be 148. One standard deviation below is going to be 112. Two standard deviations below would be 94. And two standard deviations above the average would be 166. Remember, we get these by adding and subtracting standard deviations. So if we put the Z scores right below these actual buck scores, we're going to have zero in the middle, positive one, and positive two. And then if we go backwards, we're going to have negative one, and negative two. So what the z-score is doing is it's allowing us to standardize these in terms of the standard deviation. So remember, the standard deviation tells you how many standard deviations away from the average something is. So for example, if a buck had a z-score of one, that would mean it's slightly above average. Whereas if it had one of negative one, it would be slightly above, below average. Now, ours, has a z-score of 1.35, which would put it somewhere about here, right? So it'd be somewhere between one and two. So it'd have one of 1.35 right about there. So the first question, is this buck score higher or lower than average? It is higher than average. The next question is, is it an unusual score? Well, remember, Unusual means that the z-score is going to be either less than negative two or 
greater than positive two. So an unusual z-score would be in the tails. It would be below here or above here. Now, since our z-score is between negative two and positive two, that means that it is usual. So it's not unusual. So even though it's a little bit higher than normal, it's not enough for us to be like, wow, that's an exceptional buck, or wow, that's a really poor buck. Now the next thing it wants us to do is it wants us to find the buck's antler score using the z-score. So we're actually going to go backwards from what we usually do. So remember that the z-score is going to be what you saw minus what you think you should see, which is the average, all divided by the standard deviations. So let's use what we have and fill in this equation. Well, we know that z is 1.35, that's our z-score, equals, well, we don't know the buck score, that's what we're trying to find, so we're going to keep that as an x, minus the average buck score we got was 130, divided by the standard deviation, which we know is 18. That information is from the beginning of the problem. So... When we do this, what we're going to do is that we're going to multiply both sides by 18 first, and that's going to get rid of that 18 in the denominator. So multiply both sides by 18. Remember, that's going to get rid of that 18 in the denominator. That's going to give us 24.3, which is equal to now x minus 130. And then finally, to solve for x, we're going to add that 130 to both sides. Now when we add that 130 to both sides, we're going to get 154.3. Okay, and that is going to be that buck's antler score. Now before we move on to the next problem, let's just check our work and make sure it makes sense. So if we look at this picture that we drew over here, if a buck has a score of 1.35, well we know that's going to be between 1 and 2 for z z-score. But if we look above, we also know that it's going to be between 148 and 166. Now, since 154.3 is between 148 and 166, I would feel really confident that we got the right answer. All right, now the next question is that we want to use the raw data above and say and answer the question, what is the probability that a randomly chose buck has a score of 100 or less? Don't forget there were 251 bucks total. So we want to know the probability that a buck has a score of 100 or less. So let's scroll up here and count how many bucks had a score of 100 or less. So we have these bucks here, which is 17, three that had a score of 90, two that had a score of 80, and two that had a score of 70. So what that means is that we have 17 plus three, plus two plus two. So that means that we have 24 bucks total that have a score of 100 or less. So that means we're going to have 24 bucks out of the 251 bucks total, which is going to give us a probability of 0 0.0956, which is the same thing as 9.56%. So that means if we randomly chose a buck, the probability that its score would be 100 or less is 9.56%. Now the next question says using only the fact that they have an average score of 130 with a standard deviation of 18 and our z-score table, we want to know what's the probability a randomly chose buck has a score of 100 or less. So whenever I do these problems, what I always do first is I always draw my um, normal distribution. So let me draw a normal distribution. So we have 130 in the middle, 148, 166, 112 at the bottom, and 94. Now, if a buck has a score of 100 or less, that means that they're going to fall on this side of the distribution. So they're going to fall to the left side of the distribution, and it's only going to be that little bit of a tail. All right, so when we're finding distributions using our z-score table, the first thing we want to do is find the z-score. So remember, the z-score is going to be your observation minus the average 
divided by the standard deviation, which when we round to two decimals is going to give us a z-score of negative 1.67 which makes sense because remember a negative z-score tells us it's going to be a little bit lower than the average okay and it's definitely more than one uh, standard deviation below our average now let's look at our z-score table so remember if we're looking for um, if we're looking for scores that are to the left of the distribution so over here we just have to find the score on our z-score table. So if we look here, we're going to have a z-score of negative 1.67. So I'm going to find negative 1.6, which is right here. And then I need to go over to the 0.07, line those guys up. And that's going to give me a z-score of... 0.0475. So the probability that is less than or equal to 100 is 0.0475. Now, if we look at the raw data, <clears throat> that doesn't compare super well with what we found on the raw data. Now, the reason could be, if we look back up the raw data, is that this is slightly skewed data, right? It's slightly skewed to the left, so it's not a perfectly normal curve. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad of an estimation. Now, using our z-score table, not the graphic above, we want to know what the probability is that a buck has an antler score of less than 113. So, again, I'm going to draw my table. Okay, 130 is in the middle. So if I want to do 113, I'm going to be finding the area to the left. So remember, since I'm finding the area to the left, I just need to find the z-score and then find it on the table. So our z-score is going to be our observation minus the average divided by the standard deviation. So we're going to get a z-score of negative 0.94 this time. Now when we find that on our z-square table, so we got to find negative 0.9, and then we have to find 0 0.04, and then line them up, and we're going to get 0.1736. So the probability that our antler is less than or equal to 113 is going to be 0.1736. Awesome. Now, the next one wants to know what's the probability that a buck has an antler score of less than or greater of, less than, greater than, it should just be greater than, my bad, I'll fix this, greater than 125. So, when we're looking at our distribution, the difference is we're trying to find greater than. So, instead of looking at the area that's cast to the left, we're going to look at the area to the right. So again, to find this, we're going to find the z-score first. So that's going to be 125 minus 130 divided by 18, which is going to give us a z-score of negative 0 0.28. Okay. Now, again, we're going to look this up on the z-score table. So when we look that up on our z-score table, that's going to be negative 0 0.2, 0 0.08, line them up, that's going to give us 0 0.3897. So the probability that x is less than 125 is this guy. Now that's not our answer. If we look at the picture that we drew over here, this area on this side is definitely more than 50%. Well, here's why our answer works, but we're not done yet. This is the area to the left. Remember, your z-square table only tells you the area to the left. So how can we use that to find this area to the right? Well, remember, this area to the left is 
0.3897, and we want to find this area to the right. Now, if I add the entire distribution together, I'm going to get 100%, right? It's a 100% that you're going to fall somewhere on this distribution. So, to find the probability that x is actually greater than 125, what you're going to do is you're going to do 1, which is 100%, minus that 0 0.3897. And that is going to give you the actual area that you want, which is... Do, 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 0.6103. So what's the probability that a buck has an antler score of 125 or more is going to be 61.03%. All right. Awesome. So remember, if you're finding scores that are greater than something using your z-score table, you're going to find that probability associated with your z-score and then subtract it from 100. So, if you want to put a little reminder on your z-score table for yourself, if it's to this side, you just find it in the table. If it's on the other side, then you're going to do 1 minus that percentage that you found. If you're finding the probability that x is greater than something else. Alright, so... The very last example is we want to know what's the probability we find a buck with a score between 113 and 125. So, man, I just cannot draw a normal distribution to save my life today. So, if we draw the normal distribution, okay, we're going to have 113 about right here, 125 about right here. And what we want to do is that we want to find the probability between those two. So we want to find the area between them. So here's how we're going to do it. First, we're going to find the probability that a buck has a score of 113 or less. Okay, so 113 or less. So as we saw from the previous example, we don't have to redo all that work, but the probability that it's 113 or less is 0.1736. So 0.1736. Now, if we find the probability that a buck has a score of 125 or less, so all this area right here, so 125 or less, well, we found that above it was 0.3897. So now that we found the probability that an antler is going to have a score of 113 or less and of 125 or less, well then how do we go about finding what we actually want, which is that score in the middle? Well, what we're going to do is that you're just going to take these two and find the difference between them. So to find the score in between, we are going to take those two probabilities and subtract them. And remember, it's always going to be the bigger one minus the smaller one. Otherwise, you're going to get a negative probability, and that's not possible. Remember, probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. They can't be negative. So that probability is going to be 0 0.2. 2161. All right, awesome, and that would be your answer. So let's go ahead and put a nice little box around that. So let me show you guys um, a little bit easier way of doing this. It's really good to know how to do this by hand using your z score table, but what the homework's going to want you to do is it's going to want you to use the my stat crunch. So let me go ahead and show you how to use that. So we're going to start off with question E. So when you log into StatCrunch, okay, you're going to go up to Stat, Calculators, and we're going to go down to Normal since we're dealing with a normal distribution. So you're going to see something that looks like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to input the mean, which is 130, and the standard deviation, which is 18. 
Now, for the first question, it wanted us to find the probability that a buck has a score of 100 or less. So we're going to type 100 in there, enter, and we're going to get 0 0.04779, which is very close to what we found when we're using the z-score table. Your answer is going to be slightly different because the z-score table does approximations, which means it rounds, whereas my stat lab or stat crunch is going to be a lot more accurate because it's using a computer system and the actual equations. All right, let's do it for the other ones. So what's the probability we get a buck antler that has a score of 113 or less? So let's see, we're going to type in 113 here. And it's going to be 0.1724, which is very similar, again, to what we got using the z-score table. Now, what about for question G when it says we want to find the probability that's greater than? Well, in that case, you're going to do the same thing. We're going to type in 125, but we need to change this inequality sign to greater than. And as you can see, it's filling in the right-hand side, which means greater than, and we're getting a score very similar to what we got when we found it by hand. Now, we're going to skip down to the last example. What's the probability that a score is between these two? Now, you could do what we did before, which is find those two scores and then subtract them. Or, if you go up to the left-hand corner of this pop-up window, you're going to see between. If you click on that, you can put in the between scores. So let's put in between 113 and 125. Hit enter. We get 0.2181, which is that close to what we got? It is very close to what we got when we did it by hand. So just a quick reminder, when you guys are doing this on the homework, it's going to want you to use StatCrunch. So use StatCrunch to find those probabilities, but also practice using your z-score table. So practice doing it by hand.